Hi, this is Dr. Aida Vashkal Martin, and in this video, I will talk about the aorta and its branches. It's a part of the human anatomy and physiology courses. Aorta is the largest artery in the body. It's an elastic artery. Initially, is an inch wide in diameter. The aorta can be divided three main divisions: ascending aorta, the first portion just right after the left ventricle, an arc of aorta, and descending aorta. The ascending aorta arises from the left ventricle and ascends to become the aortic arch. It is two inches long in length and travels with the pulmonary trunk in the pericardial sheet. The aorta gives the first branches right above the level of the aortic valve well, from the ascending aorta as left and right coronary arteries that supply the oxygen rich blood to myocardium. So, first branches that aorta takes out from the aorta are the right and left coronary arteries to supply blood, the myocardium or middle muscular layer of the heart. Aortic arch is a continuation of the ascending aorta and begins at the level of the second sternocostal joint. It arches superiorly, posteriorly, and the left before moving inferiorly down as a descending aorta. The aortic arch ends at the level of T4 vertebrae, thoracal 4. The arch is still connected to the pulmonary trunk by the ligamentum arteriosum. The ligamentum arteriosum is a remnant of the fetal ductus arteriosus. There are three major branches arising from the aortic arch. Proximal to distal, name are brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid artery, and left subclavian artery. Brachiocephalic trunk first and largest branch that ascends laterally to split into right common carotid and right subclavian arteries. These arteries supply the right side of the head and neck, which is the right common carotid artery, and the right upper limb, which is the right subclavian arteries. Left common carotid artery supplies the left side of the head and neck and left subclavian artery supplies the left upper limb, the oxygen-rich blood. When we look at descending uh, uh, aorta, uh, I want to uh, show you in the next slide. As you see, the descending aorta has two uh, portions, above the diaphragm, which I draw with the red color coded and horizontal line, uh, dome shaped horizontal line to represent the diaphragm. And the above the diaphragm, we call thoracic aorta or descending aorta, but it's a thoracic portion. And below the diaphragm, we will call abdominal aorta, since uh, above the diaphragm is in the thoracic cavity, and below the diaphragm is in the abdominal cavity. And some authors uh, can give uh, another name for the abdominal aorta according to before and after the uh, renal artery branches. They call suprarenal abdominal aorta or infrarenal abdominal aorta to be more specific. The thoracic portion of the descending aorta stands from the level of T4 to T12 vertebrae. It is a continuation of the aortic arch and initially begin to the left of the vertebral column, but when uh, descends, it approaches to midline. It leaves the thorax via the aortic hiatus in the diaphragm and becomes the abdominal aorta. Branches of thoracic aorta in descending order are bronchial arteries, mediastinal arteries, esophageal arteries, pericardial arteries, superior phrenic arteries, and intercostal and subcostal arteries. As you see, there are the structures found in the thoracic cavity. So they gave the branches uh, to supply the oxygen-rich blood 
to the uh, structures in the thoracic cavity. So bronchial arteries are paired, visceral branches supply bronchial and pericardial tissue and visceral pleura and mediastinal arteries, small arteries that supply the leaf glands and loose areolar tissue in the posterior mediastinum, esophageal arteries, uh, unpaired visceral branches arise anteriorly to supply the esophagus, pericardial arteries, small unpaired arteries that arise anteriorly to supply the dorsal portion of the pericardium. When we look to the superior phrenic arteries, they are paired parietal uh, uh, branches that supply the superior portion of the diaphragm, and intercostal and subcostal arteries, again small paired, nine of the intercostal arteries supply the intercostal spaces with the exception of the first and second because they are supplied by a branch from the subclavian artery. Abdominal aorta is a continuation of the thoracic aorta beginning at the level of uh, T12 vertebrae, thoracic 12. It is approximately 13 cm long and ends at the level of the lumbar fourth vertebrae. At this level, the aorta terminates by bifurcating into the right and left common iliac arteries that supply the lower uh, part of the body, uh, uh, lower extremities and the pelvic cavity. Branches of the abdominal aorta in descending order are the inferior phrenic arteries, which is paired parietal arteries uh, arising posteriorly. It's in the back. At the level of T12, they supply the blood to the diaphragm. Then in the anterior portion, then you can see the celiac artery, a large unpaired visceral artery arise anteriorly at the level of T12. It is also known as the celiac trunk and supplies the liver, stomach, abdominal esophagus, spleen, and, and the superior duodenum and the superior pancreas. The next is the superior mesenteric artery a large unpaired visceral artery arises anteriorly again just below the celiac artery it supplies the distal duodenum jejunal ileum and ascending colon and part of the transverse colon it arises at the lower level of lumbar first l1 middle suprarenal arteries small paired visceral arteries that arise either side posteriorly at the level of l1 to supply the adrenal glands renal arteries they are paired visceral arteries that arise laterally at the level of between l1 and l2 they supply the blood oxygen rich blood to the kidneys gonadal arteries Paired visceral arteries that arise laterally at the level of L2. Note that the male gonadal artery is referred to as the testicular artery and in females called the ovarian artery. An inferior mesenteric artery is a large unpaired visceral artery that arises anteriorly at the level of L3. It supplies the large intestine from the splenic flexure to the upper part of the rectum. And median sacral, sacral artery, it's not shown here, but uh, I will show you in the next uh, picture. Median sacral artery, an unpaired parietal artery uh, that arises posteriorly at the level of L4 to supply the coccyx lumbar vertebrae and the sacrum. And lumbar arteries and the sides, there are four pairs of parietal lumbar arteries that arise posterior laterally between the level of L1 and L4 to supply the abdominal wall and the spinal cord. I think this is very helpful uh, drawing and an illustration and we call our man and but an outer man and makes love to tango with the inferior vena cava and its branches so 
art, abdominal artery and inter, inferior vena cava is uh, lays uh, next to each other. That's why we call aortic tangle, just to make sure uh, it makes our job easy to remember. As you see, you, uh, you can see here, it shows the inf uh, eyes, shows the inferior phrenic, but notice eyes should be in the back. Uh, and celiac trunk is the first branch, then superior mesenteric, uh, renal arteries, gonadal arteries, inferior mesenteric and lumbars on the sides shown with the number seven and common iliac the two branches that uh, takes out from the aorta afterwards uh, common iliac uh, can divide uh, the internal and, and continue uh, as external iliac arteries and number nine as i promised before is showing you the median sacral just on the bif bifurcation behind the bifurcation uh, that is a good uh, drawing. Please make sure to you draw and label too. Uh, it will help you to uh, remind, uh, remember that information. Now let's test your knowledge. And I label this. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have pointer to point to you. But uh, uh, what is one stands for? Which part of the name the part of the uh, blood vessels? and it is ascending artery. And number two, arc of artery. Number three, descending artery or thoracic artery. Number four, right coronary artery. Number five, left descending artery. It's a, a branch of the left uh, uh, coronary artery. And, and number six, Brachiocephalic artery is the first branch from the uh, arc of arch of artery. Number seven, left common carotid, and number eight is the left subclavian artery. Name the blood vessels shown here by number one, right subclavian artery. Uh, name the blood vessels labeled with number two, right common carotid artery. Name the blood vessels numbered with, labeled with the number one, celiac artery, two, superior mesenteric artery, three, left renal artery, four, right gonadal artery, five, inferior mesenteric artery, six, right common iliac artery, seven, left common iliac artery, eight, left internal iliac artery, and nine, left external iliac artery, and 10, right internal iliac artery, and 11, right external iliac artery. I hope you enjoyed and learned um, please feel free to give me feedback by liking or leaving a comment below. Have a good day.